The following presentation does not represent Australian opinion or intellect. We do not speak for any religious order or ethnic minority. We are not political scientists or uni graduates. We are insignificant upper lower class scum, comparing notes and airing grievances. It's just our opinion. Deal with it. No way that the GST will ever be part of our policy. Never, ever. Never, ever. It's dead. By 1990, no Australian child will be living in poverty. You should show us. That was on the radio. That sex is on fire. Really, I fucking hate that song. Do you know why? Because that song was like. What? Really? <laughs> that that that's what you bring it down to. I don't know good music. Well, if you take twenty four karat magic over sex is on fire, you don't know good music, my friend. Are you joking? No. You think sex is on fire? Sex on fire is a better song than twenty four karat magic? Yeah. Actually, a proper written song. Uh huh. Uh huh. Um, Your sex is on fire. Do you know why I hate that song? <laughs> Other than the fact that it's a shit song. I hate it because that song was like the resurgence of rock and metal in the eyes of like the commercial fucking audience. <laughs> so many fuckwits that would have never have listened to a band, uh, any song with that featured a band. When Kings of Leon came out with that song, they're like, yeah, I love hard rock. Like... <laughs> Sex on fire, like really? I'm serious. And that, that's when they they started branching off. Think about it. It was like 2008, 2008, nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when they started branching off. All these indie stupid wannabe hipsters, like the start of the hipster era, they all started branching out when Kings of Leon came out. Cause they're like rock bands, like get fucked, man. Like you, you were listening to Tony Braxton or you know Cassie or some shit the other day. Like really, now Cassie? You- oh my god, name drop. Cassie, she's hot. She's gone out with um, Diddy, who, oh. who changed his name to Brother Love. <laughs> Have you seen that? Brother no. Love? He changed his name to Brother Love. Oh my God. Really? I did it two days ago. Two days ago. He changed his name to Brother Love. <laughs> oh, God. Cassie, what was her big song? Uh, me and You. Was that what it was called? Hang on. I've got it on my fucking iPod. It reminds me when I was working at JB Hi-Fi. She was big. Yeah, dude. She was... Um, Hang on. Wait. Oh, stupid. Kings of Leon. <laughs> Hang on, wait, wait, wait. I've got it here. Like a reverend on the radio. <laughs> Are you serious? Like really, right now, man? <laughs> Seriously? They're from Tennessee, that's where you like them. Um, so Sex on Fire and that came out, but they were um had a couple of albums before that, and all the diehard fans are like, oh, their old stuff is so much better. But I've never listened to it. I only know them for their commercial stuff. How long have Kings and Leon been around? Ninety nine. Are you serious? Yeah, really. Like, apparently, their first albums were really good. They've got big time with uh, Sex on Fire and stuff like that. <laughs> um, sex on Fire really pushed them into the main. Yeah, me and you, Cassie, this song here. It's just me and you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're exactly like that, dude. Uh, uh, you remember this song? Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> hey, right. <laughs> uh, no, I know this song. Yeah, dude, I only downloaded this song about four or five months ago. No, oh. like, I saw Cassie live. <laughs> It, um, when was it? Like 2000 and... Which club? Nine? Which club? <laughs> it wasn't a club. It was actually at, um... It was at Rod Laver. Yeah? Yeah, someone gave... Someone got free tickets to go see... Remember Travis McCoy? Who? Travis McCoy, whatever his name was. He did that song. I wanna be a billionaire, I'm so fucking bad. Oh, I hated yeah, that song. I hated that song, but they got free tickets to the gig. So I come with me, no one wants to go with me. I'm like... Yeah, of course no one wants to go with you. It's Trevor McCoy. Like, that cunt's going to disappear off the face of the earth in about a week. She's not, no, no, come. Yeah, there's other artists on the on the thing. I'm like, all right, yeah. So I went to Rod Laver, rocked up, and Jay Sean was, like, one of the headlining acts as well. And I'm like, okay, okay. I've, I love Jay Sean. I've seen him live before. He's good. Mm. I think Cassie was on as well. And... This is me and you. Dude, it was like watching a stripper, man. Oh, really? Mad. Yeah. It, it, she was just lip syncing and dancing like the whole time. She's oh. like, oh, yeah, cool. Try reading. But, dude, that song, I remember that song distinctly because I remember um, back, I was, fuck, it was like 10 years ago. It was over 10 years ago. It was when I was at SAE. A friend of mine was uh, talking to me on the phone and she said, she was like a real sort of blondy, clubby sort mm. of Greek, you know, from the north. And she's like, oh, there's this mad track out there. You know, it's got the best beat ever. Blah, 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 blah. Have you heard it? I'm like, no. 
And she was like, it's called me, uh, me and you with uh, Cassie. I'm like, no, nah, I never heard of it. That was a hidden message because she wanted it to be me and you. No. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> no, I never touched her. Trust me. Relax. Trust me. Um, <laughs> I'm like, all right, let's hear it. So she's played it over the phone, just like the first like five seconds of it. I'm like, dude, I could make that in like two minutes. She's, what do you mean? <laughs> but they, okay, hang on a second. And I literally, I was sitting at my desk, pulled up one of my sequence of programs, just keyed in the main riff, did the beat, and I had it, like, carbon copy. I've still got a copy of it probably on my computer somewhere. Even DJ, DJ Bobby could even pull that one off, I reckon. Probably. It's four notes. Yeah. Look at what she's up to these days. You. She's going out with PD. Yeah, but that's Wait, what she's up to. Don't you mean brother love? Yeah, brother love. She's <laughs> going out with brother love. That's what she's up to. <laughs> Seriously. But I'm that beat, I've always loved that beat. Like, if you hear the middle parts, like, during the chorus and stuff. Do you reckon she's getting plenty of love off Brother Love? Brother Love. <laughs> Sorry, man, he's looking after her. Man, yeah. he'd, be, he'd, be, <laughs> he'd be looking after her very well. But, he she's not, but she's not stupid. Man, that guy's like, well, she's, dude, she's 31. And he he's, what, 50? <laughs> How old did he be now, 50? Did he? Yeah, he'd be in he'd his be late, f- yeah, probably early 50s. Late 40s, yeah. early 50s. Because Eminem's like in his late 40s, and he's older than Eminem. He's got to be older than Eminem. Yeah, 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 because uh, Sean Combs. <laughs> <laughs> no, Brother Love. Brother Love. Brother Love. <laughs> he's uh, 48. There you go. Worth 820 million. She ain't stupid. <laughs> That's really weird. You always think of Diddy like being around forever. Yeah, because yeah, like, I mean, he he's started... He's only 48. He's only 48. He's only 15 years old than us. <laughs> yeah. But you think about it, like when he was in his... Pro- like, that's what trips me out. Like, Tupac died at was 25? Yeah. Tupac was 25 years old when he died. You see photos of him in his videos. He doesn't look 25. He looks a lot older. Yeah. <laughs> look at this guy, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just a Wesley Snipes wannabe motherfucker, man. <laughs> nah. I had a mate. We had a mate back in the day. He looks like evil. Call, huh? He looks like evil right there. He does. He is. We had a mate back in the day I used to call Diddy. Illuminati. Because he never smiled, like, in photos, ever. Oh, always remember, serious. Yeah, do you remember Diddy's video clips with, like, uh... One, uh, 112 or B2K or whatever yeah, it was yeah, where he's yeah. just dancing in the crowd yeah. but he's just got this grim like solemn look with his yeah. ditty he's the best in um, Get Him to the Greek if you say no yeah I'll tell you what I saw that movie at the cinemas and the only thing I remember it from yeah. it is P. Diddy yeah he's pretty good at it it was just funny it's about how his kids chucks like cost a million dollars yeah. <laughs> Jordan, you know kids to, Jordans <laughs> yeah it would have cost to put like Jordans on like yeah, yeah. Five kids or whatever <laughs> Diddy was cool I mean, that's what I was saying like Diddy man he's only 40 would you say 48 hey. 48. Just turned 48. And he's been an entrepreneur, like, in the hip-hop realm for years. And he's the dude, one that... smart man. Dude, he pioneered, like... He start, he was the one that first started the vodkas. Yeah. Uh, the clothing line. He knew where the money was. He was, yeah, entrepreneur hard, man. Illuminati. Confirmed. Because uh, he made money. Uh, man, he was a smart dude. So anyone that he makes money is in the Illuminati. You know what? He never really got involved in too many, like... See that level of fame. He didn't be, but he wasn't one of those rappers and stuff that got involved in too much trouble. As in, yeah, he had his incidents with the gun, pistol whipping, stuff like that. <laughs> but no, no, no. But you know what I mean? He never he a few got, pistol whips here and there. It's all good. Yeah, but he <laughs> sort of separated himself. He sort of separated himself to make money. He knew where, where it was at, man. He knew the industry. He goes, I want to make some money off these fuckers, man. That's what he did. He was a producer yeah. before anything else. Yeah, man. Yeah, he learned Everyone else sort of run around and kill each other. Yeah. Like, he just made money. He's a smart one. Tupac, Biggie, they all died around him. Yeah, why is it everyone died around him? <laughs> and he's... Illuminati, and, and, he's, yeah, and, he's, and he's sitting there, $860 million, that's his worth, and now he's banging Cassie, 31-year-old. He's nearly, yeah, he's nearly a billionaire. Yeah. And, he, <laughs> and if he's 48 now, and he's been active, what, 20 years? Over, Easy. Over, 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 years. over. Yeah. yeah. Yeah? I mean, when did Ready to Die or, like... um. Life After Death or whatever, like Biggie's I'll albums. A, I'll have a look it up. Yeah. yeah, all those albums, they came out like mid-90s. Like mid-90s, late-90s. I mean, they all died like, you know, 96, 99, like all around there. Nope, 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 nope. Notorious. That's a great track. Yeah, man. Yeah. But dude, is it... Is... I... <laughs> He pioneered... 94. Ready to die came out in 94. Yeah. So, it's over 20, 24 years. Uh, like, you know, it's, tw- it's, it's... 25 years will be... Um, like, you know, he's coming around yeah, that yeah, bend. Yeah. So, that means he's been active since he's, like, early 20s. Juicy. <laughs> what a song. Like, when did Juicy come out? <laughs> no, 94. August 8th, 94. <laughs> that song has been sampled how many fucking times? Oh, it's been raped. Chris Brown sampled it on his latest album, which just came out a couple of days ago, yeah? yeah? On a track called Juicy Something. And it's, he sampled it, and he's also sampled... Um, California Love by uh, Roger Troutman. But Juicy, everyone knows that track by Biggie. It's considered, uh, it's literally considered to be the the perfect hip hop track. You know the song, Johnny? Probably if I heard it, I can't think of what it is. 
so juicy, yeah. I'm so <laughs> juicy, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just just like that, man. It was all a dream. When the bitches see me, they get you safe. Yeah. Come on, man. This album is dedicated to all the teachers that told me I never amount to. You know, I'm not full gangster like you guys. I'm not a gangster. gangster. But I was hustling for Who's gangster, man? We just like music. Want to be gangsters? Yeah. Yeah. And to all my people. I'm so juicy, yeah. yeah. Don't ruin the song, dude. My version's better. It was all a dream. I used to read Word Up magazine. Something pepper and heavy D up in the limousine. Hanging pictures on my wall. You trolling bastard. Mr. Magic Molly Mall. I let my tape rock till my tape pop. Smoking weed and bamboo, sipping on private stock. Way back when I had the red and black lumberjack with the hat to match. Remember rap been do? The ha, the ha. You never thought that hip hop would take it this far. Now I'm in the lumberjack. I rock tight. Time to get paid, blow up like the world trade. Born sinner. Man, the tourists. Yeah, man. Have, have. Dude, that song is considered have. to be the perfect hip hop track because of his flow, the bit, like everything, right? No. Have. Do you want to hear something? No. Listen, this is the track that it was lifted off, right? It's got, um. It's I reckon called, my version's better. Dude, this is the track. <laughs> I'm such a juicy. You shut up. <laughs> dude, this is a track. This is what it was lifted off. No one knows it. You tell me what the difference is, dude. Same fucking beat. <laughs> Same beat. Same beat. Dude, he's even kept the chorus. Hey, hey, yo. I'm very juicy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious. Big, but... P. Diddy produced this track. He uh, do you mean Brother Love? Yeah, Brother Love. Oh, yeah. He literally lifted the entire track and put Biggie over it, right? Kept the chorus. The chorus is almost exactly the same as well, but the main instrumental is identical, yeah? No one knows it. I've, I've got a stupid, like, encyclopedic sort of fucking... Yeah, memory with this sort of shit, because that's all I used to do when I first started making music. I didn't want to ever sample anything. So I always wanted to know where the original sample came from. But that's a carbon copy of the beat. Diddy took it, repackaged it, made a fucking million dollars off it. It's one of the most iconic hip-hop tracks of all time. Mm-hmm. So he's got rich by doing nothing. Dude, did the same thing with Notorious. <laughs> it's a fucking... The Notorious sample is from, um... What's it called? No. Uh, no, no not Bowie. Is it no, Bowie? Notorious. Yeah. Bowie, now you're talking my language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not even joking. Hang on a second. Hang on. But guys, that does have in, in makeup. Not Bowie. Not Bowie. Man Sorry. Um, waiting in the sky. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> He'd like to come and meet us. <laughs> but he thinks he'll blow our mind. Is that what Johnny does at night? Just puts makeup on like Bowie and just... Oh, so, no, no, no. So no, no, no not, not Bowie. Uh, Duran Duran. Oh, chalk and cheese. Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I keep thinking it's Bowie for some reason. Duran Duran, yeah. old film. <laughs> Dude, pull up. Do me a favor. Yeah. Hang on. Um, Girls on film. That's actually... Um, that's a cool track. It was actually a very risque film clip for the time. It very. had like a bunch of girls in bikinis dancing. And Dude, it was, everyone was like, oh my was, God. The uncut version was naked girls. They just wouldn't play it on... The TV, but it's Duran Duran, man. They got some bugs. <laughs> <laughs> and some cock, probably. <laughs> probably. <laughs> Anything went in the, in the 80s. <laughs> you, you should have been, like, in your 20s in the 80s. Oh. I reckon you would have just destroyed people. <laughs> Bobby with the mullet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, actually, I got it here. Uh, hang on. Notorious. And I'd have, like, the um the car, like, in Joe Dirt. You know, Chris Rock's car, that, <laughs> the Slant 6. <laughs> <laughs> oh, actually, I just have Joe Dirt's car, the yellow one with the big wing you in the back. You just look like Joe Dirt. <laughs> yeah. Actually, fuck, I don't have it. What do you need? Phone. Uh, the song Notorious by Biggie. I'll just sing it instead. No, don't sing it. I'm Notorious Fools, here I come. Yeah, that, that's it. Got my gun out and my big, big old dick. <laughs> that, that's it, 100%, dude. Seriously? Yo, yeah, check it. Call Lil C's, tell that motherfucker to bring me some motherfucking weed from the hospital. Don't, fuck that. Notorious. Tell that before you go pick up 10,000 from Dez and go take about like 20 G's from Dino. Alright, check this one out. Master, masterpiece right there. Yeah, relax, man, it's the opening seconds. Beethoven's rolling in his grave. I guess it's, yeah, it's not, it's uh, worse than what's it called? Dick Lips. <laughs> That's a great song. You're fucked. It's an actually good, proper written song, not just someone pushing a couple of buttons. <laughs> it's the same <laughs> track. Yeah, they just sampled the. It sounds more 70s. It's 80s. Duran Duran. Same fucking track. Let's look up Duran Duran, man. <laughs> Dude, same track. And uh, the next one was um, Going Back to Cali mm. with uh, Biggie. And that sample is more Bounce of the Ounce. Uh, 
Roger Troutman, Zap and Roger. And that makes sense because the track is about going back to Cali, Zap and Roger with like a big California sound, you know, the big... They just fattened it up and... Yeah. But dude, Diddy was like... Made iconic tracks out of these fucking samples. Biggest staple tracks. Everyone who knows Notorious P.I.G.'s works knows those tracks. And they're just blatant fucking samples, man. This is 20, 25 years ago. So he's worth nearly a billion dollars for just taking samples and just chucking a voice over the top of it. Well, Kanye West does that. Kanye West has been doing that for fucking years. Everyone thinks he's a genius. Mm. Jesus piece, all those kind of songs. Dude, I hated all... Kanye West because of that. Because he just saw samples. But did he? He's not Kanye. Like, did, I, he, I... Did, he, did he did all that shit... 25 years ago, yeah. but he he branched out and did the entrepreneur thing, where he started record mm. labels, started clothing lines, fragrances, you know, fucking started investing in all that sort of crap. He was doing what 50 Cent went and did, you know, 15 mm. years later. But the, you can't blame him, you can't blame his hustle, man. Like, P. Diddy's a fucking brand. Like, it's a massive thing. Who's got more money than P. Diddy as far as, like, hip-hop entrepreneurs, man? Apart he, from Dre. Yeah, Dre, and Dre did it because he sold Beats Headphone. by Dre. Yeah. That pushed him into but, the million mark. But... Diddy was like millionaire back in the day. Yeah. Like he started this whole money, money, money. But thing. actually, had yeah. money, had money from <laughs> selling drugs. No, 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 no. This is legit business. The worship of money, basically. <laughs> Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> so would that mean Steve Jobs was Illuminati? Why? Oh, I'd say so for sure. Really? Head of one of the biggest, like, the biggest computer company in the world. Yeah. You're throwing sure. him under the bus. Yeah. Your icon. Your 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 Lord and Savior. Yeah. Your your fucking <laughs> messiah. Oh yeah, man. Him and Gatesy. Him and old Gatesy. <laughs> but Gates is a philanthropist beyond like beyond anything, beyond compare. No one's given away more money than uh, Gates. Ah, d- doubting that as well. How are you doubting that? Look at his fucking it's tax fact returns on record. Yeah. He's shown like. Hang on, what, he goes to Africa and jabs a few girls with needles and all. He's like a messiah. No, it's <laughs> in like he's given away how much of his fortune every year just based on philanthropy. Like could what? be a tax write-off, but it, it's he wrote, yeah. Once he, money. once he retired, Sorry, just could be a once lie. he stepped down from the board of Microsoft, <laughs> he's, 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 he's a full-time could be a lie. Philanthropist now. He's a full-time philanthropist. Do you just hang on? Wait a second. No, nah, no, dude. He's like it, when, when you listen to conspiracies and stuff. He's like yeah, right up there, with just like. The lie. Not a good guy. But old Billy Gates. How oh, much old is, Billy okay, Gates. <laughs> okay, let's look up that fact. Billy G. How much money? <laughs> Billy G is not a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a wank. <laughs> He's real bad and he... Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> you're, you're a bad man, Johnny. You're they're, all, they're all into like, um, like population control and stuff. Says who? Says the conspiracy nuts. Yeah. As of, hang on, <laughs> as of May 16, 2013, according to the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, Bill Gates has donated $28 billion to his to his foundation. What's his foundation do? It's a philanthropic foundation, man. To, you know, uh, primary aims of the foundation are globally to enhance health care, reduce extreme poverty, and in America, expand educational opportunities and access to information technology. Yeah, population control. <laughs> population control? Where? So it's enhance healthcare and reduce extreme poverty. Yeah, that's what they market it as, but package it as. So he gives money to wipe species off the earth, like just like mm. what eugenics? Mm. <laughs> Dude, they go over to Africa and like jab them all, and it's like yeah, just giving them like cancer and stuff. What are you talking about? True. Dude, I'm pretty how sure. Is, okay, hang on. How is it true? Did you see it on some random YouTube? Well, I watched it a video? long time ago, so I don't know all the all the gritty details. <laughs> you are such a fucking like. What's the word I'm looking for? Like okay, a stony say- conspiracy theorist. It's like, oh, it's got to be true, man. It was on the YouTube, man. That's what they said. Like, no, they- well, they had lots of facts and stuff, which I can't think what of. What facts? Right now. I don't know. I've got to watch it now. Senate people know that. <laughs> <laughs> well, how do you know that he is just telling the truth? Because you just look into his fucking organizations, you know, methods and fucking policies and everything they're doing, anything that's documented. So you're saying he's going out of his way to spend $23 billion to set up... Death high- camps. <laughs> <laughs> he's setting up healthcare and fucking, you know, building schools and shit. But at the same time, he personally is out there with a big needle, just jabbing people as they walk through the door. Dude, I'm pretty I'm sure... Personally. I'm <laughs> mathematics to the left, and, you know... Him personally. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the African government and countries in Africa are killing their people for him. So yeah. he doesn't need to go there with a big needle and start jabbing people. He's got people. better things to do with his time, man. Yeah. He's going to... I mean, he's only got maybe 10, 20 years left, if that, 
Why would he? What does he give a fuck about? You know, he's like, I'm <laughs> going nice down. Everyone's going down with me. Yeah. <laughs> who are you talk- like, where are you getting this from? I don't know you have to watch a documentary, dude. What documentary? Oh, there's a bunch of them. Some basement documentary from some guy yes. named Dave. <laughs> That's what I hate about the internet, man. I fucking hate it. Some idiot puts out some fact, and now it's fact. You know what I mean? Like, that, that, that's it. It's fact. Why? Because someone put something up on YouTube? No, like, I'm saying, if you watch it and, like, get all the details, and you have a better understanding of it, I can't remember what all the details. What details? Like, t- give me one. I'll have to watch it again, and I'll tell you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to look it up. <laughs> seriously, just look up Bill Gates eugenics. Like, seriously. But that's what shits me. Half of these docos are made by hair-brained retards that sit in their fucking basements watching other YouTube videos, and then they just regurgitate the information and make it out like it's fact. That's not fact, dude. Their little blip on the cosmic radar is a YouTube video with 200 likes. You know what I mean? Yeah, Bill Gates is sterilizing people in, in Africa because he wants to take over the world. Dude, he's, he's, he's going to be, he's already taken, he took over the world in the you know early 90s when Windows 3.1 came out. He doesn't give a fuck about euthanizing Africans. Like, seriously. It's, it's like, all, it's all a big sham. You know, like, he's building schools in one region of the world, but he's killing off people in the other. Really? No, do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it, it all just boils down to Chinese whispers from some fucking stoner conspiracy theorist. This is from naturalnews.com. <laughs> Natural News. <laughs> it says, Bill Gates, Monsanto... Yeah, that uh, I remember. And eugenics, that. how one of the world's wealthiest men is actively promoting a corporate takeover of global agriculture. As in Planned Parenthood and shit like that. <laughs> you going to believe natural news? Yes. They've got a really shitty website. Too. I'm all about the natural, you know that. <laughs> yeah. Apparently his father <laughs> has long been involved in the eugenics group Planned Parenthood. Yeah, dude, if you watch it, man, you'll change your mind. It's like, it goes real deep. Like, yeah, just, yeah, I don't know. Uh, which founded the concept man, you know. that most human beings are just reckless breeders and human weeds in need of culling. Would you ever... Okay. There's a bunch of quotes as well. I love, said. Like bunch of quotes. I love how he like, just boils down to him being a billionaire. Like, hey, he's got that much money. He has to be. Would, Would you ever f- think Dr. Dre was planning a takeover of, like, you know, eugenics and shit? <laughs> Dr. Dre. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> no, his, his agenda is different. What, what's his agenda? Oh, just to spread, like, the love of money and guns and stuff like that. Guns. <laughs> Why? Why? Because he's black? Why? No, he was in That's it. racist. <laughs> okay, why? Okay, you tell... Okay, why do you think that Dr. Dre's agenda differs from Bill Gates? <laughs> yeah, he's still a billionaire. He's still a billionaire. And you, just said, Compton. <laughs> you just said... You just said... Oh, billionaires. All right, okay. Dre's a billionaire. Why is his agenda different? And why would you say his agenda is to spread the love of guns and money? Pretty clear cut. <laughs> no, I'm asking. Well, I don't know. He was kind of like one of the like pioneers of starting that whole gangster movement or whatever, right? No, he was a pioneer of starting socially aware rap and music. NWA weren't about spreading the culture of guns. It was about bringing um, awareness to what they were, they were dealing with. It was all about the music, man. So he only raps about wholesome good stuff. Well, no. I'm yeah, saying, well, that's what I'm saying. Well, first of all, Dr. Dre doesn't write his own lyrics. Ice Cube, he's his most profic- prolific... Ghostwriters are Jay Z, Eminem, Snoop, Melman, Hitman, and um, Ice Cube, and MC Ren. They <laughs> MC wrote most Ren. of his lyrics. Yeah, yeah. They wrote most of his lyrics because Dre, in by no way, shape, or form, is a rapper or a songwriter. He's a producer first and foremost. Secondly, NWA, Public Enemy, KRS One, they came out and they had socially aware, conscious rap. That's what it was about. It wasn't about spreading. A gun culture. It was about raising awareness to what they were dealing with in the streets. I, I was watching um, Ice Cube on an interview the other day with um, your mate Bill Maher. <laughs> your mate? Yeah, and a whole bunch of other uh, other guys. And this other dude, I can't remember who the panelist was that was sitting like on the show as well. Some white dude, some some political white dude. And he said he asked Ice Cube what he thought of all the hip hop coming through these days, like with Migos, Future, or the mumble rap, or the you know, club sort of base shit. And he goes, I find. Um, he says he finds it different because he, he says he grew up listening to NWA because he was around the same age as Ice Cube. So when he was like in his 20s, NWA were massive. And he goes, he can't really connect with, he doesn't really understand what's on the radio now with Migos and Future. Mm-hmm. And then Ice Cube gave a really um, eloquent sort of diplomatic answer. And he said something like, they were about, it's, it's really weird because they were about socially aware rap, yeah? Like KRS-One, Public Enemy, all these guys in the... 80s and ni- early 90s were doing socially aware rap where they were talking about, you know, all that sort of shit, yeah? 
and he says, um, now at some point, all the hip hop labels became commercial where like a bunch of white guys said, you know what, we can market this and make money off it. So that let's just, and the culture changed somewhere. So it all became about money, clubbing, living mm. that like big lavish lifestyle and like all that sort of shit. Cause making, that's making it want. rain, etc. Yeah. And that's what people, <laughs> they, they, this, he said something really interesting. Tweaking booties, etc. He said something really interesting <laughs> when it, um, oh, look, well, that sort of shit. And he goes, cause you'd never see KRS one or NWA being promoted the way Migos and Future and shit are, are promoted mm. now. They were banned off the radio, mm. not fucking put out. They wouldn't play the shit. There was a, there, I was watching another interview the other day. I, I fucking should have saved it. Um, hang on, I'll see if I did. There's a, a rapper from the UK. I can't remember his name. And he was getting interviewed like in, at some sort of Oxford thing. And um, His said, name wouldn't be AJ Tracy, would it, by any chance? I can't remember, man. I watched because that guy's pretty good. He's a UK rapper. He's actually pretty good. And that was he was asked. He was DJ getting, Edward he was getting asked <laughs> the third. <laughs> <laughs> Edward. <laughs> <laughs> he was getting asked about the use of the N word. DJ George Pompers. <laughs> <laughs> Spitting tracks. <laughs> <laughs> he was getting asked about the use of the N word. Yeah, <laughs> and how he felt about it, and like la la la, and then like white appropriation of it, this and that. And he's um, he's half black half white i think his mum was black and he was just talking about the use of the word and how like what it means to him and he stopped using it for whatever reasons and then you yeah know, this this and that and he just kept going back and forth with it but he said somewhere he goes the racial divide like the he said something about the racial platform of like hip-hop and urban music and shit and how it's interesting how how different it is now with the money side of it how it became commercial and what's accepted and what isn't and what appropriating is okay and what isn't but he made, he made the last the last word of his interview so these were the last words of his interview before like the video cut out and he said something that's interesting how like you know you'd he could never make like do you remember the song black korea by ice cube it came out in the heat of like the watts rights and all that sort of shit ice cube had made all that stuff and he was talking about krs1 and public enemy and ice cube and nwa about how all their shit was banned off the radio yeah for being racially mm. um this like racially by that's when all the Koreans and shit took arms, yeah. man. Racially, ra- like all that racially charged and shit, yeah. Mm-hmm. And he goes, he loves how he could never make it, how it's flipped now. And the irony is, two white guys could never make a track called "Crackers in Harlem," but Kanye and Jay Z can make "Niggers in Paris," mm-hmm. and that becomes a massive phenomenon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah. "Crackers in Harlem" would never fly. No, mm-hmm. absolutely not. That'd be yeah, right. It's interesting how it's flipped now mm-hmm. because it's going to make money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And mostly to like white guys in suits. <laughs> Crackers in Harlem. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's where like, um, do you remember I was talking about, uh, Master P? Yeah, yeah, Master yeah, P yeah, yeah, yeah. Ago, but being from the South and being an entrepreneur, yeah. he was essentially Diddy from the South. And it was different with these guys because they became, and like Jay Z, Russell Simmons and all them, they made their record labels so they could literally put out whatever they wanted. They didn't have to go to some starchy white guy to get something out. Like, does that make sense? Mm hmm. But it's interesting now, like with that crackers in Harlem, niggas in Paris flip. It's like one would never fly now, but no. one is mm. acceptable because we appropriate that much culture now because it's going to make that much money for people. Mm. Yeah. For whatever reason, whatever the um, the agenda is behind it, whether oh, you know, it's progressive or because it's you know, urban or blah, blah, blah. It's like you could never do that now, mm. but one will because it'll make money, even though it's racially uh, d- uh, divisive. Like as in, mm. does it make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's fucked, man. Mm. Would you reckon... Your dick lips band is in Illuminati? <laughs> yeah. You reckon? Yeah, more of that Tom DeLong shit came out this oh, week. Send me that thing. What that is he crowdfunding his own spaceship? Spaceship? Like, what the fuck is wrong with this guy, man? <laughs> I'm, do- I'm, do- I'm donating. <clears throat> of course you are. Semen. I'm going to go with him. <laughs> yeah. You're going to be like... Um, we can share a bunk. That Apple White, the guy from uh, the Heaven's Gate. Dude, that's a Heaven's Gate. It's, it is... Heaven's Gate, man. Remember we talked about the cult like yeah, months, yeah, months ago. Yeah. I oh, talked yeah. about Apple White and Heaven's Gate. Were yeah. they the ones with the cool t-shirts? No, no. They had the shaved heads and the Nikes. And that cool ass website. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They had the Nikes that looked like, um, the website, man. like Cortez's. <laughs> the great yeah, that 80s, that really yeah, 90s don't they have the cool website. t-shirts? Yeah, they do. You can buy them. You can still buy them. Yeah, the cool yeah. t-shirts. Yeah. Dude, they believed that the comet was coming and behind the comet was a spaceship with Christ on it. And they were going to get taken away. That's what the suicide was about. <laughs> Just getting towed by the spaceship. Yeah. Oh, the other way around. The, the comet was towing the spaceship. <laughs> yeah, these t-shirts. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. love the colours on one of them. Swag. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to like, be cool with the hit words. Look at this shit. Yeah, that's fucked. 
Come to our church with swag. Yeah. That's the one you like? No. Nah, nah. that, they're just memes going into like the 2000s, yeah. man. It was like a real colourful one. Torpedo. Yeah. It was like a rainbow but, one, so, Nick. They had the same belief. You, t- what? you could easily turn around and flip and say, Oh, you need to have this jumper. I like that. I'd wear that. <laughs> yeah. That would suit me. Tom DeLong could easily be a cult leader now. Seriously. I'm looking him up as a cult leader, I think. No, no, but it could be. You could define him as a cult leader now. Yeah. It's fucking psychotic, man. It was hanging on his every word, waiting for that spaceship trip. <laughs> Lost it, man. See the other shooting the other day? Oh, yeah. Just, oh, another, just another shooting in Texas. Was it Texas? The, uh, yeah, the, yeah. The, the in, church in the massacre. Church. Yeah. He walked into a church and just started shooting and said, you're all dead, motherfuckers. And, just and Trump, Trump said, it's, it, it was a mental illness. It's a mental, it's a mental health issue, not a gun control issue. Is that not insane? Because the guy mm. was in the Air Force... Yeah, he lost it as superior. He'd been in military prison. You know what, though? It is pretty easy to kill a bunch of people if you wanted to. Dude. Without a gun. Like, walk, in, walk in with a Molotov cocktail and just throw it into the room. Dude, it's a room on fire. Run around stabbing people in the neck. Yeah. So, I mean, like, I do get people kill people. No, don't, guns don't kill people. Yeah, but... Doesn't but help. Guns do make it easier. Exactly. It doesn't help. Like, I mean... Okay, it's interesting. No, no, sorry. No, I'm just saying it doesn't help. Like, you can kill anyone. You can go behind someone and snap their neck. Yeah. Right. You could garrote someone with the fucking guitar uh, string mm. and take their head right off. Dude, I've got a walking stick right here. I beat you to death with it. <laughs> I, thought, I thought you were going to say bash someone over the head with a guitar like Jeff Jarrett from the wrestling. <laughs> no, no, no. I remember my old man made that point when gun control first started coming in as an issue in 96. He said you could take a, a guitar string, an E string, yeah. raise it thin, and take someone's head clean off. Absolutely. Just like this. Yeah, no, literally. Yeah. Well, straight off. Well, you're going to start banning guitar strings now. Only rubber, rubber guitar strings. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I'm being serious. But how many people would walk around with guitar strings killing people? That's the whole thing. I'm going to become the guitar string killer. <laughs> you know what's interesting, man? <laughs> there's a there's a quote. I saw this on the net the other day, and I, I running, saved it. Running rampant in the mountains. Okay, going on this issue, yeah. <laughs> You're fucked. <laughs> um, Jim Trum was quoted. I don't know who Jim Trum is. If you want to look it up, you can look it up. But Jim Trum was quoted as saying this. It's an abbreviation for Donald Trump. <laughs> yeah. After 9/11, <laughs> we banned knives and box cutters on airplanes. We then banned liquids of more than three ounces. We understood the connection between these things and the loss of life that followed. So why can't we understand the connection between assault weapons and mass shootings? Well, you can't have a mass shooting without weapons, right? Yeah. That's the whole thing. You can't but have... But that's the point. Hmm. When 9-11 happened, we weren't allowed to take fucking aerosols onto planes. We man. still we, can't. We, we, yeah, we, uh, international flights. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Domestic we can, and yeah. only up at the limited quanti- yeah, quantity. Small, those little... Can't take nail mil- clippers, can't take... Pocket knives, can't take Dude, I can't anything. take my lighter. No. Can't take a lighter on a plane. No. Right? As in after 9-11. Because mm. we said, you know what? These are, can be... Yeah, and then they banned uh, knives and forks as well at yeah. one point. Yeah. No metal cutlery anymore on planes. Mm-hmm. Because these were precursors to like a hostage takeover or whatever, yeah? So if we can understand that connection, then why don't Americans... Australians, we don't have that issue. But Americans, why can't they see that assault weapons can lead to fucking mass murders. Because they're in the Second Amendment, to yeah, be true. because it's the Second Amendment. How fucking ridiculous is that? They don't understand that this, the connection between the two. We got... Jim um, Jim Jeffries did, like, the best stand-up. Yeah, I've seen it. Yeah, we all, I think we all have. It's the best. When it came to the Aussies, we're just like, yeah, right, here you yeah, go. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yeah. yeah, he's like, all right, then. <laughs> all right. Yeah, he's like, yeah. The government came out and said, no nah, more guns! And we all went, yeah, all right, that's yeah. fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it was a different time, though. It yeah, was a different right. time, and there are heaps less people here, so. That doesn't make a difference. Like, just easier, though, you know what I mean? Because if you have a small population, just like, it's a lot easier than just a hordes of Americans that already have No, this- but it's not a matter of ho- uh, an overhaul. It's not a matter of, like, getting every gun off every fucking resident immediately, but it's starting the works of, like, the conversation to change the mentality mm. the culture. Mm. I know, but it's so ingrained in their culture. That's, that's why it's what, hard. Yeah, Whereas with us, saying. it wasn't. I, you, gun culture wasn't big you, here. We brought up hip hop just a second ago, spreading gun culture. Or whatever. I was like, dude, the rednecks in fucking Alabama don't listen to hip hop, but they're toting guns left, right, and center. You I'm know a, what I mean? I'm gonna blow his head clean out. And, and that's the thing. <laughs> and I, and I made that. I brought that stat up fucking <laughs> a year ago, yeah. where I said that it's interesting how the biggest massacres in America all happen by these white suburban dudes. That would never have listened to hip hop ever, but they blame hip hop as being the epicenter of gun culture. Mm. Like, does that make sense? 
Dude, this fucking look at the guy that killed everyone in Texas just now. Do you think he listens to fucking NWA? Pretty sure he doesn't. Seriously, probably listens to Kelly Clarkson. Yeah, but I mean, how many drive bys are there that we don't hear about? You know, like in the hood or whatever. Yeah, but the, that's a difference. Though. The drive by is inner city violence between it, rival it, gangs, yeah, rival people. Yeah, the gang members, right? These massacres. Innocence. Taking 50, 60 people out. Innocence, yeah. When when a black guy shoots another black guy in the inner city conflict... You won't hear it. You no know, one hears about it. No one gives a fuck because it's just another black guy killing another black guy. Like on black violence. Yeah, in crime. Like in Melbourne, dude. Like you hear about... Like gangs always fucking... Sh- gonna- dude, we grew up with Clayton. How many guys do you think we knew that like got fucking off? Yeah, man. You know? Of course. I can name a thousand gangs in our areas, man. Did you... Look this way. Did you have gangs in the gully? Like actual gangs, man. Gangs, man. Like gangs. Not just a bunch of bogans that, like, Call themselves you know, the gully boys. Yeah. Like, realistically, did you have gangs growing up? Oh, there was one back in the day, the Knox boys. It was like... Who were they? Asian gang. Some Asian gang, right? Yeah, I like, and you singled them out as, like, being Asian right now. Like, that, that's what they identified as, right? Like, as in mm. the Asian gang. Yeah. I mean, all the gangs were, like, minorities back in the day, right? But, dude, we grew up in Clayton. We had fucking CCT, o- Oakley Walks, Walks, Clayton boys. Cambo uh, clowns. Cambo clowns. You know like, what I mean? Dude, they were fucking... We're at a party once. At uh, Kelly Park, yeah. and went to, everyone locked themselves in the hall because these guys were outside with machetes, just slashing cunts, like yeah. prop up gangs, man. Like, you know what I mean? And they're all ba- like, yeah, predominantly like they were either ba- uh, based on, um, but they did like low level uh, drug trafficking, hmm. like you know, theft, sh- theft, shit like that. Like, hmm. and it's not just Southeast Oakley or Clayton or whatever. Like, you had the dude, you had the Polynesian cunts. They used, uh, what were dude. they called? Um, oh fuck, what were they called, man? CCT. Yeah, but we had yeah. ANC as well. Oh, yeah. All Nation Crew. Yeah, whatever they're fucking called. <laughs> WTO. I can name a hundred. And dude, and that's, that's just in that area. area. You keep going north, you know, you go, like, it's all minorities, you know, that were banded together, like, originally from the mm. 70s and 80s. But then, like, you know, clash of cultures, whatever you want to call it, petty theft, crime, mm. whatever the fuck the reasons are. Gangster right? music. It's nothing to do with gangster music, dude. Gangster music fueling their aggression. No. Dimension. No. No. What fueled their aggression was money and hatred. Yeah. And prejudice. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, racism was fucking bad, like, when we were growing up. Like, it was a lot more uh, prevalent than it is now. Mm. But, anyway, all I'm saying is you never hear about this shit because it was always just in a conflict between gang shit. You know what I mean? Like, thug on thug sort of shit. Mm. But then you get, like, you know, some dude... uh, What's his name? Fucking that psycho in Texas... uh, Nevada... uh, that shut up 50 plus yeah. people at the country concert. Yeah, funny how the Mr. Paddock they single him out to having mental fucking health issues now and being on meds. They single out this dickhead in Texas, single him out to having mental health issues and being on meds. Every white guy that comes out sprays 50, 60 people in a flock, but all of a sudden has got mental health issues. Oh, it was troubled, you know what I mean? Nothing to do with gun control, nothing to do with the culture, just he was a lone wolf. But, again, if a black guy was to do it, oh. or uh, um, an, an Arab, Muslim, Muslim? If it was a black guy, be- dude, if it was a black guy, Ice Cube would be like on a cross right now getting crucified. Yeah. If it was a Mus- if it was an Arab... Terrorist, straight away. He's a terrorist, we're banning more Muslims coming in. Like, we're ban- we're- Islam has to be taken out. Like, dude, what's it got to do? Did anyone question this fucking psycho in Texas? Did anyone question his faith? What was he? Uh- what denomination he go to? I'm guessing if he was in Texas, he was going to like a Baptist church or if I, like, you mm-hmm. know, some sort of shit like that. Going to cast them. Yeah. <laughs> does, does anyone fucking questioning that? I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Yeah, Johnny. How come that didn't come up in the fucking media? It didn't. Why? Because he screamed, no. die motherfuckers, instead because, of Alu Akbar. No, because he's got mental health issues. Apparently. Yeah, because he's got mental health issues. He was in the army and then he tried to like do this and do that. Seriously. If I went out and sprayed everyone right now, are they going to question my so faith? Great. Are they going to question my faith? With your big hose. <laughs> yeah. Are they going to question my faith? You have, that... no, you have no faith. No, but I'm saying, is that going to be a point of argument? They're going to probably look at this podcast and say, this guy was clearly deranged. <laughs> you know what I mean? They, Act speaking of terrorism. In, speaking in tongues and multiple personalities. Act and... of terrorism. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. It's fucked up, man. So what you know isn't what you know, man. It was influenced by the current well, of the devil. It's weird, weird we got onto this mass shooting thing because uh, I watched, I listened to on my one of my favourite conspiracy shows. His latest episode mm. was this guy he had in. It was about the Sandy Hook shooting. Yeah. Do you know much about that? Mm. That kid was fucked. Yeah, the, the, he had the Asperger's, Asperger's or whatever. So Jim Jeffries talks about him as well. Yeah, it's a conspiracy, right? Which I never really looked into much because I kind of just dismissed mm. it. 
but it was um, the whole thing was just a setup. Like it was just a, 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 basically like a movie. Set up what? It was fake. It was, like, the shooting was fake. It was like a, like a movie set. So no one actually died. Yeah. And they're all crisis actors, fucking all this shit, right? Yeah, I love that term, the crisis actors. Dude, I was so sceptical on this, and I never even bothered to look into it, because I was just like, how would they even do that, right? Yeah. But the guest on this latest conspiracy show, he was oh, just this guy, right? He's making no profit. He's not doing it for anything other than just, like, trying to get the word out. But he was, like, a safety, safety, safety officer at a school for, like, when emergencies yeah. happen and stuff. And um, basically, he was saying that there's like so many inconsistencies with it. Um, what the kid actually did, how many people he killed in the time that he had, yeah, it's just like impossible, basically. And he actually went digging, trying to get all these public records about the case, and he just gets turned away. And he couldn't get any of it. Had um, cops come to his house and threaten him, told him to like stop looking into it and stuff like that. Is it because he's convinced that it was all crisis actors and just stayed? Yeah. Because he said every single aspect of it makes no sense. He goes, I was in this industry for my whole life, like running these fucking drills, like setting yeah. up drills for when shit happens. He was the guy setting it up. And he goes, nothing made sense. All the lies they told about the paramedics getting in there. They never actually went in there. Like all this shit, dude. So he, he's basically, he's got a court case this month. So what, what do you say? So what do you reckon that um, right now there's like, you know, 50 kids or whatever. How many people were, di- how many people were killed in Sandy Hook? I, got, I can't remember. Uh, 27. Okay, so you're saying there are 27 people living in witness protection right now? Yeah, well, no one knows like, what happened to these kids or what about that. And they sung once at the Super Bowl. It was like the Sandy Hook survivors, right? They sung once, and then pretty much that's all anyone ever heard of them. Like, they just disappeared after that. <laughs> well, he said, he said those kids that survived should have had, like, this big... Um, like a big meeting with like the superintendent and stuff where he like gives them badges and like puts on a thing yeah. for them and stuff and there was no word of that. They just pretty much just disappeared off the face of the earth. Well, what the was kids. it meant to set up? Was yeah. it meant to tighten gun control? Because it didn't. What was the set up for? Oh, it could be whatever, man, just to see if they can get away with it, just to spread more fear, gun control, all that shit. Yeah, but like, the thing is, is that if it was done, the only thing I can, the only agenda I can think of like it having, like as in moving, would be A, to increase security in schools or B, Tight and gun control. Neither of those things have happened. Well, it's like a step towards that. You know, add them all up or whatever. But Sandy Hook... But it's also just like, can we do this? Can we get away with it? Like, well, I just on, looked up on some a world articles. stage. I just looked up some articles. And yeah, I looked up conspiracy. Okay. Like, I, I put it in. And there was an article just recently, this year, saying, please stop spreading these rumours of it being um, fake, because my child did die in this thing yeah so that's the one argument that everyone turns to like um even rogan like he always turns to this article where one of the dads wrote this thing and um the guy said on the, the on this conspiracy show he's like if my kid was killed in a school shooting right like my the last concern i would have is what people are saying on the internet about it well like that'd just be like a tiny little flea bite compared to this giant like well not really because you're dishonoring the death of his child you're, you're saying that because you're saying happen. it's fake and you're, you're trying to tell me that my son did not die and I'm or living died, through this hell every day. Yeah, died for some, like, stage setup. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I can, yeah, I can see it. I, like, both sides. But, I'm, like, he's come out and saying, like, well, fuck, man. Like, you're trying to tell me that my son didn't die. Like, my six-year-old didn't get shot. Mm. Kind of thing, so... Well, he's actually going to court with one of the kid's parents mm. this month. Mm. So, I'm going to follow it and I'll keep yeah, you yeah. updated. Keep me updated. Like, let me know. Because he's going to, like... He has all this shit ready to go just to say to this guy, like, all these inconsistencies in the case, mm-hmm. just to bring to the thing. He can't wait for the court case to start. So then what like, happened to the guy's kid, then? The- th- hypothetically, or theoretically. <sighs> don't know. Just, he's in Aruba on an island, playing. Dude, Dude he, like, that's what this guy said. He tried to find out where these kids have gone. Like, they sung one, like, or whatever, like, the, yeah, and they're just gone. Like, can't find any records on them and shit. I don't know. You know what, man? Like, I, I can't think of all the details. Yeah, of the thing, but every, everything he said, I was just like, "Oh my god!" Weird, like, that, like you brought this up, yeah? Because like, and this is like a dude. He's not trying to get profit or anything. No, he's no, just no. like he was just on here, just he's, trying to get. He's in word deep out. now, and he's he like, wants to yeah, find he's out. Like, what, Please, everybody, get behind yeah. me. Email me. But, send me money for this if you can to be help. A conspiracy, right? A, th- a conspiracy. How many people do you think would have to be involved for this to be a conspiracy? How he many? actually, he actually, the the host asked this guy that question. What do you say? Uh, it's like this thing called a, which I've never heard of. It's like a capstone. Oh, what's the word he used for it? Basically, it's just like, 
goes down the chain of command of like all these people in in um, seats of power yeah. throughout the whole community. Yeah. And it's like just we're having this event, and boom, like all these people are involved to make it happen. But I'm saying, for someone to fake something like Sandy Hook, where 27 people were killed, right? How many people would have to be involved? Lots. There's like um, judges, there's um, head of police, heads of school, you would have to, all those people. Off the top of my head, right? For this to work, you would need, just think about this collective of people. You would need everyone involved in the school, right? All administration in the school. How many people would be, yeah, elementary schools in, in the States aren't like here, where you've got like, you know, maybe 50 uh, staff members. They're huge because... Yeah, but if it's not an actual real school setup, then they're not going to have the full administration on there. It's a shit. fake school now. They yeah, built no, it is. Dude, it's not a fake school, but it's like just this run-down, derelict building that was like contaminated. They put out pictures after the fact, right, after it happened, and like the pictures of the school was just like this hideous, filthy, like grimy, dirty walls and stuff. The front shot of the school had no wheelchair ramp access at all. Okay, so you're saying that the building itself was just a fake... Uh, it was just a, a, a abandoned building they moved... They created an elementary school out of nowhere. In, in, a, in a run-down old building that was already had okay, chemical... So this waste. gets even better. Now, think about this, yeah? You would have everyone in that neighbourhood... Questioning. With a, within a 2K radius of that fucking school. Neighbours... How many residents would be there in a 2K yeah, radius? That's the other thing. There's something about this whole town. Like, there's something weird about the town, dude. Like, there's well, these... Like, two, is Toothless Joe the only resident there, but there happens to be a school down the road? Well, like a deserted school, like just this old derelict building. Okay, that's building. what I'm saying. So the town would have to be empty. And they actually demolished the school afterwards. Okay, so the town would have to be empty. The school would have to be non-existent. It's only a small town. Population what? Have yeah, a look. Newtown. What's it called? Newtown. Newtown? Where? <laughs> okay, the only reason why I'm saying... Look, only look. reason why I'm bringing this up, right? I'm asking you these questions is one thing. Uh, um, following yeah, facts, I'm following facts Bible on Insta, right? And they've just got random facts that come up, like every now and then, like you know, um, yeah, like right, sometimes funny, something like yeah, there was a guy, the founder of Match.com, you know, on, on like dating site or whatever, Gary Creeman, lost his girlfriend to a man she met. <laughs> Gary Creeman, <laughs> yeah, lost the, lost his girlfriend to a man she met on Match.com, right? Just random shit, yeah. Like Cristiano Ronaldo's first and last goal for Manchester United with free kicks, yeah, like just random crap, yeah. Um, Tottenham Hotspur shit. Second yeah, on the ladder, like mate. <laughs> Second on the table. Just beat Real Madrid. Oh, you good blog goat. <laughs> okay. The last fact that came up 12 hours ago. All right, I saw this just before I went to bed. I went, huh, really? That's interesting. Maybe I'll bring it up with these cunts. For the, do you, okay, do you think the Apollo moon landing, the first one, was a conspiracy? Like it never happened? I do. Okay. Here's a fact. Why haven't they gone back? <laughs> They have. Have they? There was more than one Apollo mission, dude, to the moon. No, like, since that time, why haven't they gone back in, like, recent times? There's no need to. (laughs) There's no need to. They set up their equipment and it's done. They need to go back. No No, no more research. Would you go back back to, you know, I don't know, Marimbula? Oh, every year I go, mate. (laughs) Here's a fact. But surely there's more you can find out. Like, with your advancements in technology of, like, you know, whatever. No, we're going, now we're going to, like, you know, Saturn and sending shit to Jupiter. We're pushing to the edge of the universe, not at the edge of our galaxy, not to the moon that's just a couple of hours away. Well, it's just a satellite taking photos, but yeah. Okay. Yeah, because we don't find anything out like that at all. We're just shitting on science. Yeah, but it's just a satellite taking photos. I could do that from my bedroom. Look, Google Earth. <laughs> with my cannon. Yeah. Dude, here's a fact. For the Apollo 11 moon landing conspiracy theory to be true, over 400,000 people would need to be part of that secret. From like the people in NASA control, to media, to the engineers, to the manufacturers of the ship, to the people that made the fucking clothing for the astronauts, to the caterers, right? Over 400,000 people would need to be part of that secret in the 60s. Yeah? Yeah, I don't know how they came up with that number, but... But literally... The, like, considering everyone, the tele- the TV broadcasters, the papers, everyone you would have to influence on that level to keep their trap shut, right? How many people would need to be involved? Yeah? Over 400,000. Dude, actors go on fucking soapies and give away, like, keep storylines just in random interviews, like, a week after they finish shooting because they can't keep their mouths shut. You know what I mean? But in order for something that level, 
like faking a moon landing, you would need over 400,000 people influenced. Sandy Hook, that's why I'm asking with Sandy Hook how many people would need to be involved and influenced to keep that thing a secret. Well, I can tell you how many people are in Newtown. Um, as of 2016, it was 27,865 people. That's the census. That's just the people living in Newtown on census, mm-hmm. not including relatives and friends that would pass through and know the building, know the area. I'm pretty sure if all of a sudden a news cr- if, if a, a production crew setting up shop in an abandoned school, you can't just invent a school out of nowhere. But it's easy to, like, block off areas and no, stuff. No, you can block off areas, but I'm pretty sure someone would have seen something like, what the fuck are they doing there? That school wasn't there yesterday. Well, I think a lot of people did, but whistleblowers, they just get told to, they get silenced. You're telling me every whistleblower on the planet? Man, fucking, what's his name? Uh, uh, the cut off the bachelor, man, the bachelorette. <laughs> the, the Sophie Monk's fucking boyfriend. They're sitting there like, dude, the... the no, the show hadn't even finished rapping. And there were cunts coming out of the woodwork saying, oh, they're not together. Yeah, she's I've got seen, another boyfriend. Yeah, she's got another boyfriend. I've seen him on the street. This is just over the bachelorette. You're telling me something massive like my son was killed. That's not going to cut. Like someone's not going to come out of the woodwork. Dude, come on, man. That's that's why I think it just goes a bit far sometimes. With Like, I'm all up for conspiracy theories. Like, if there's mm. some form of fucking logic to it. You know what I mean? Well, like I said, dude, every single point that this guy raised, I was just like, God damn, like, just the way he was silenced, dude, when he tried to get just public freedom of information, he tried to get these this shit. His name's Wolfgang. <laughs> <laughs> he, sa- he sounded he black. He must be true. He sounded black, like, in the interview, he sounded black, but he's like a 70-year-old dude, like, just sounded like a nice guy, like, just trying to fucking get this shit out there, dude. He, he actually said, if I'm wrong, he goes, he goes, I know the implications of saying this and how much it would hurt people. He goes, but I'm so sure in this. He goes, nothing makes sense in this. I'm so sure this is the only reason I'm doing it. And and if I am wrong, he goes, I'll book myself into a mental health hospital forever. He goes, that's how crazy it will be if I'm wrong. Yeah, so basically, he just said he's that sure of himself. He's like, he goes, I wouldn't do this to hurt all these people. You know, I know how devastating it would be to for these people to hear this that it's not true. But he goes, I'll go to mental health hospital, and book myself in if I'm wrong, hundred percent. And he's just sounded like such a professional dude, like one of those really like just. I don't know. It's just really, yeah, interesting. No, no, look, it's definitely... <laughs> oh, he isn't? He sounded really black. Like, just, yeah, I just... Wolfgang Helbig. Helbig. Wolfgang Helbig. Yeah. It's caught yesterday. Uh, today. It'll be today in America. Uh, September 17th. Wolfgang Helbig sued over Sandy Hook. Uh, I've shut down my Sandy Hook website. Who sued him, though? One of the parents. Because of what he's saying is bullshit. Yeah. Oh, here it is. Is it the Sandy Hook documentary? Wolfgang Halbig story? Yeah, yeah. Someone made a documentary. Apparently, it's really good. Oh, I'll, I'll watch it later on. I'll let you know. But look, like I said, it's something, to see, it's something to look at. It's definitely something to look at, but I take conspiracy theories with a grain of salt because a lot of the time it's just like random shit that makes no sense. Like, yeah, okay, man, you found a correlation between something and something. Yeah, all right, the, the moon's made of cheese. You're right. You know what I mean? It's it's a sensitive issue. It's but double brie. <laughs> triple cream. Triple, triple cream. Triple cream uh, fucking brie. cheese moon. <laughs> but can you imagine if like that came out, like that it was a fucking, like that's just, wow, that's like next level shit. But it's like crisis act to pull that off. It's they, this guy. That's Wolfgang. Oh, he just, just he looks like a televangelist. Yeah, he does. Looks like Alex Jones. <laughs> yeah, he does, man. He looks like Alex Jones. Dude. Dude, that's Alex Jones. <laughs> <laughs> There's another conspiracy. Alex Jones was Bill Hicks. I mean, was Bill Hicks. Is Bill Hicks. Is Bill Hicks. As in Bill Hicks died and now he's Alex yeah, Jones. Yeah, a little bit of... They look so similar. A little bit of face work and he became I mean, Alex Jones. Come on, man. Who believes this shit? <laughs> it's like Lois Eyehorn is actually Ray Finkel. You know what I mean? <laughs> Ace Ventura, yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. That's on TV, I think, tonight. That's mad. <laughs> are you serious? Yeah. <laughs> They're not the same person, man. Like, seriously. Both big belly men from Texas I with political why. agendas. <laughs> Alex Jones is actually funny. Like, he just goes all out. Oh, dude. Some of his shit. Oh, he actually... Uh, there's two things he's... Um, Changed his mind on Sandy Hook and Pizzagate. Why? What's he think? Oh, they're, they're both conspiracies. No, no, no. They're two things that he came out and said, yep, Sandy Hook was a stage and Pizzagate is real. Then he came back and re- retracted it and said, I'm wrong on this. They're the yeah. only two. Well, he's allowed to come out and change his mind. 
Like you are. You're allowed, like once facts are presented, like you're allowed to change your mind on shit. You don't just go down with a ship. Yeah, you but it's weird. Like it's just like the only two that he's done it on, and it was like this kind of like weird sort of serious like take back. Like I don't know. I don't know. And Sam Harris actually mentioned um, Sandy Hook on his podcast as well the other week. Who? Oh, you don't know Sam Harris? Uh, no. Nah. Like Sam Harris? Rich, Richard Dawkins type sort of dude. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Richard Dawkins type of dude. Quick question for you, Johnny. Because you love conspiracies and all that kind of stuff. Why is it when anything happens like this, it's always a conspiracy theorist that come out and, oh, fuck, that didn't happen, didn't happen, didn't happen. Why? They've got nothing better to do? They're just searching for the truth, Nicholas. But the truth, most of the time, is right in front of them. <clears throat> yes. Well, <laughs> or is it smoking mirrors? <laughs> smoking mirrors? These guys are smoking crack. <laughs> Like, I don't know. You can't question every little single thing. You know what I mean? Sometimes like, shit just is the way it is. Like, it... How often do these conspiracies... Okay, for a guy to get a fucking hotel, like a hotel room, deck it out with guns and just fire into a crowd, like, that is just the most insane fucking situation ever. And people are insane. And people died. I mean, was the Vegas thing staged? Oh, well, apparently, yeah. No, as in the people that died, was that staged? No, it's, it's not a staged event. Well, That's like an actual event. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. They died. Yeah. yeah. So now, why is, yeah, why would Sandy Hook be staged? Was Columbine I'm not, staged? I'm not even going at you, I'm just asking. No, no, was, was Columbine staged? No. That cinema? That, yeah. That guy, uh, John Holmes, was his name? His name was John Holmes. <laughs> yeah. The no, no, no. Psycho not, in, um, I'm not saying they're all staged events, I'm just saying this particular one was... I'm not saying it is, but I'm no, saying no, it's no, a yeah. conspiracy. Okay, who who is it staged by, though? Government? Is it... Powers it be, brother? What powers it be, man? Because all it did was tighten the rain. All it did was tighten the reins on fucking the need for gun control, which is not going to happen because the president doesn't give a fuck. Yeah, but it also said to them, look what we can do now. We can pull off a fucking mass fucking global fucking show and people believe it. Yeah, but who's them? I don't know. Illuminati, <laughs> Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> Illuminati it confirmed. Back, it always comes back. Dude, how do I know who is fucking the most powerful people of the world ruling? I don't know. It like, always comes back to oh, them. <laughs> like, who's them? <laughs> no one knows. The man. Yeah. No one wants to believe. That's the thing. You know what that does? That underpin. That, like, just totally takes away the fact that people are psychos and you need better control on, medica- on medication, on fucking... Uh, gun control on all this sort of shit. It's only like just, oh, it never happened because it was just a work of f- uh, fiction by some higher powers that be. Okay, so what about the lunatic that actually, you know, no, 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 he was an actor. Mm. Th- 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 do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I just saw some pictures now in the Sandy Hook thing, people trying to point out that how fake it was and the kid got taken out twice out of the school and stuff yeah. like that. I'm pretty sure they were different kids. Yeah. <laughs> but... Anyway, like, I could, I could, like... What he said, right, for this kid with who was mentally mm. challenged, for him to enter the school, kill as many people as he did, whatever, in the time frame, it's like a Marine couldn't even do it. It's like an impossible fucking feat for him to do it. So he did, did he, did he go from classroom to classroom? Is that what it was? Or did you go into yeah, one Yeah, like classroom? the way he got into the school, like bypassed security, fucking went through the rooms, like precise shooting, blah, 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 blah. Like, this kid that was, like, had Asperger's, like, he was, like, mentally challenged. He'd never really had much experience with guns and stuff. So it's like for him to do that was like an impossible thing. Have you, have you looked up Asperger's, what those kids go through? As in, they're actually very intelligent. Yeah, they switched on. Asperger's... Asperger's is a, dude, Asperger's doesn't make you a drooling vegetable, no. man. Asperger's makes you, makes you a member. Yeah. And they've got a photogenic memory. Yeah. So they, he could have gone into the school and gone looking around. He would have precisely taken photos in his head. Asperger's, that's what happens. Asperger's doesn't make you a drooling vegetable, no, dude. No, and, and, and you wouldn't... You, I'm sure you've walked... You've spoken to people with Asperger's and you wouldn't even know they've got it. Yeah. That makes you focused like you're on fucking ice. You know what I mean? Like, just driven and you don't lose focus on shit. See, that's what I don't like, man, when it's like, oh, this would never have happened... This could never happen thing. is it yeah, actually it could. It doesn't take much, man. You t- like, you know, Martin Bryan was fucking a, a bumbling psycho... He managed to kill 30 people in a span of a few hours, walking into a cafe to start spraying. You know, dude, it doesn't take, like, dude, the guy in in the the church Mm. started firing off rounds, killed how many people? 30 people or whatever, 27 people. Mm. Dude, it doesn't take much. Just one one fucking Tech-9 sprays how many bullets per second. 
You got a family of six in front of you? <laughs> Done. There's six people dead, man. Took half a second. Mm. Doesn't be, doesn't be marine. Yeah, yeah, doesn't... I, I don't know, man. It was just like how he got into the school. The weapon he was using, I think it wasn't like a like a full automatic or whatever. Okay, but dude, it doesn't take like You learn how to cock a gun. I knew how to cock a gun when I was six. You can go to the carnival and shoot the ducks in the fucking, on the pond, on, on the wall. You already, uh, you already know how to pick up a gun and fire it. In the States, anyone can get a gun. Let me look up what guns he had. Any time. You're going to start dissecting that sort of shit? It's not like he was, you know, he had a Glock. Yeah, one so it was a handgun. Okay. Yeah, that, but then he had, he had the Bushmaster XM15, which is a semi-automatic rifle. An M15? Dude. Jesus Christ. That's dude, tell me, tell me you couldn't take out 27 people with that thing. Dude, if he's got the, if, if he's got a rifle in his bedroom for 10 hours, I'm pretty sure he'll figure out the mechanics. You can figure out the mechanics of that gun just by playing COD. Every online shooter has 45, got that fucking rifle. 45 rounds. Dude, you know what? Per, his ability yeah. and knowledge of guns, I'm not fucking discrediting that. I refuse to discredit that. Do you know why? Because if you play all the, if you talk to anyone that's into online shooters, man, like mm. COD, like Battlefield, like all, mm. all that sort of shit, everyone knows an extensive library arsenal of fucking weapons, man. And not just that, people with Asperger's have a higher intellect in learning. Yeah. So, um, I know a family friend, a kid, right? He's like four or five years old, all right? And, it kind of tripped me out because I didn't even know he had Asperger's, right? And he's like, I want to read your book. I'm like, okay, let's go read the book. He knew this book. He goes, here, take the book. I'm like, aren't you going to read it? He goes, I will read it. He goes, you turn the pages. This kid memorized the book. I'm talking like 25 pages, dude. Asperger's. And I'm sitting there going, holy shit. So he could have memorized. Their learning is different. So their social skills are not yeah. there, but their learning capabilities is way beyond what us three can put together. You know what I mean? So he could have remembered this. He's, he would have seen something and picked it up in his mind straight away like a photo. Yeah, man. I talked to, dude, I talked to golf at work or yeah. Frenchie or fucking, you know, Johnny Dez or whatever. And we're like playing online shooters and stuff. Mm. And I, like, and they're talking about like, yeah, you know, these guys are our age. And they're talking about, oh yeah, you need to get the MP5 with the fucking extended barrel clip. It's got mm. a better weight, weight to fucking mm. something ratio, less spray. And like, they're, and they're like gamers. They're, they're casual gamers or, you know, they play once a day for a, an hour or two. Yeah. Dude, you got a, a 16 year old. His entire life is based on fucking first person shooters or blah, 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 with a lot of free time on his hands in the internet. You're telling me you can't figure out the mechanics of an M15. Oh, I'd say playing a game is a lot different than actually no, holding but I'm a gun saying and shooting it. Actual arsenal, as in the mechanics of a weapon. Dude, you play, um, uh, what was the one? Like, in- I'm great at COD, but I probably couldn't, like... Yeah, because you're apathetic, man. You, but, you but couldn't, I couldn't change get a, jocks if you didn't... I couldn't get a to. gun and, like, just go hit targets and shit. Because you're, yeah, yeah, okay. you're not actually intent on that, man. Mm. You don't have any interest in that. But I know that if that was your... If I gave you a manual on something and said, dude, can you read this and learn it? You've got the focus to sit there and do it. You're, you're like that. I know that about you. Well, right? you, like, you do your own... You service your own car. I give you shit about being fucking lazy and apathetic, but <laughs> I know that, like... A car, like I'm confident that you could take it a transmission apart if you had the fucking paperwork mm. in front of you and you were motivated to do it. Mm. I know you could do it, mm-hmm. you know. But that's what I'm saying. If you could be fucked. <laughs> yeah, but dude, <laughs> games like the Division, yeah, like the Division or fucking um, what's it, Wildlands, the one I've been playing, I was playing months ago. You you take apart rifles in that thing, man. You pick up rifles. You know the mechanics of them. You know the scopes, the weight, the cartridges, all the sort of shit. The sheer mechanics of the gun. You know how it's going to handle. So if you actually had a real life version of it in front of you, like an M15, it's it, like, it would help, but it wouldn't yeah. give you all the skills needed to like put no, no, it together and it shoot it. It would give you the skills of it, but it wouldn't be hard to just take the safety off and fucking load it. But this is where I say, like, did this Wolfgang guy look into Asperger's? Does he know what that illness does to a person? I think he does. He's sounds like a what I'm dude. saying is, but if, I think like he was saying the kid was kind of like he just didn't seem very switched on or something. Yeah, no, no, no. What I'm saying is this, man. You can't discredit the fact like he had this massive kill count, right, in a school. It's not like he was in a war zone mm. and he had Marines fucking shooting at him and snipers in clock towers trying to pick him off. He had six and seven-year-olds to six, shoot him. six to 13-year-olds mm. and fleeing, flailing fucking teachers running. You spray an M15. How many bullets does an M15 release, man? In, in, it's at 45 rounds. 45 rounds and it's a semi-automatic weapon. So it's like, doo, 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 doo. Dude, it's not hard to pick up an M15, hold it and fire it in front of you. It's not like he was shooting at moving targets 40 miles away. Mm, they were he was shooting at kids point blank. Big difference, dude. You can wipe out fucking numbers like that. Can you imagine a guy going in a chatty and just spraying 
everyone there. You'd kill 60, 70 people just off the first clip. Mm. Bullets going into kids and coming out the other end. That's what pisses me off. It discredits the fact. It's shit like that that will discredit things like gun control. You know what I mean? Like, oh, we like Trump coming mm. out and saying it's not an issue of gun control, it's an issue of mental health. No, dickhead. The guy had a semi automatic fucking weapon and sprayed into a church of 30 people. Tighter gun control means you won't let cunts with Asperger's or cunts with PTSD, mentally unstable people, getting M15s, mm. man. Because you, you know what I mean? We established that in Australia in 1996. After the last fucking massacre, we established it and we said, you know what? Too many fucking high-caliber rifles floating around. People you're not getting screened properly. Anyone can have an AK-47. What the fuck? We need to sort this out. Mm, that's back in 96. That was in 96, and we haven't had a fucking mass shooting since then, man. We've had shootings, but We've not had shootings, mass but not shootings. mass shootings where any Joe can just buy mm. an M16. People don't understand it. Yeah, but the thing is, even if they brought in gun control... There'd still be mass shootings. So there's so many guns like around in circulation. Okay, you know? but there were guns in circulation in Australia, and they were they all got bought back and destroyed. People still have guns here. Yeah, so yeah, like, but there's no but mass it's shootings. It's the start. You can't just say, oh well, that's how it is. You know, it's always going to be like that. That doesn't work like it's that. It's got to be step by step things, man. Yeah, if it was like that, then yeah, racial segregation would still be massive. People would still be getting lynched in the states. Aborigines would still be getting chased in the fucking mm. the wildlands. You know what I mean? Oh, well, that's how it is. No, it's not how it is. It's how it is now. It's not how it was, and it's not how it always has to be. That's what pisses me off, dude. All these things just sidetrack mm. the under and undermine the actual fucking issue and what can actually be done about it. That's what shits me. Like, dude... Uh, but I feel like someone, if they wanted to get a gun and go on a mass shooting, could get a gun whether there's gun control or not. Dude, you could go get a gun yeah, right that's now. that's what I'm saying. Yes, yes. Understandably. Illegally. These guys are going and getting guns legally. As in, but there, there's no checks for mental health. There's no checks for nothing. Yeah, in the States, you can get a fucking M15 over the counter dude, at Kmart. Sim- dude, sim- dude sim- imagine walking in. And you're imagine like, walking mm, in the Kmart. I'll take that M15. I'll take the M fucking, yeah, the yeah. M5, the M1. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll take that high power, high caliber rifle. Really, yeah. uh, that's a five day wait period. Yeah, that's all right. I got five days. I got nothing but time. Mm. Is it for a gift? In those would you five, like a yeah. would you like a gift wrap? Yeah. In those five days, I'm just going to read up on it and see what else I can scrounge yeah. around. In those five days, I'm going to pinpoint where I'm going to do it, how yeah. I'm going to do it, entry points, yeah. exit points. There's a there's a. It's like, can you imagine a kid going into Kmart? It's like, yeah, I'll take the M5. <laughs> What? <laughs> it's just the M5, that, that, that submachine gun right by the M5. How many box of bullets? I just need one. Yeah, just, just one box. It's fine. You know? Yeah. Are you sure about that, son? <laughs> oh, look. Yeah, look, yeah, We've yeah, got a special fine. on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, two boxes for the half Can we fit you for the camouflage flak jacket? <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the point. And Jim Jeffries pinpoints it hard. He brings up the kid from Sandy Hook because he goes, that kid was Asperger's as fuck. Now, if you make guns illegal, yeah, you can't just go down to the docks like this kid, if they made guns, if if they tightened gun control, and you can't just go to Kmart to buy a fucking gun, mm. it's not like he's going to be down at the docks yeah. going, gun, I need a gun. <laughs> like, it's not going to work like yeah. that. You guys got guns. Yeah, it doesn't work like that. And and he brought, Jim Jeffries brought up lots of good points. He said, you know, to buy a... I think it was like a Tech 9 or whatever mm. gun he was... Mm. I, I've got to find a stand-up. How I'll did the kid it... get the gun? Did he go to Go by? Dude, he went to Kmart! Is that where he got him, Kmart? Dude, dude, legit went to a shop. You can just go and, to Kmart. And and got a gun. That's what he did. Yeah, the and then there's a 5 But this is the point. Even happen. if he didn't go to Kmart to buy it and just had a mate buy it or whatever, the point is access to guns... Oh, yeah, dude, I'm totally with to It's too easy. It's too easy. easy. Yeah. And Jim Jeffrey said, a gun on the black market, like... In, in America, you can buy, like, I think it was like a Tech 9 or whatever. You can buy that over the counter for like a grand. Mm. Yeah? Like, you know, half a grand or whatever, 500 bucks a grand, whatever it cost. In, the, in America, in Australia, that gun is illegal. To buy it would be like 20 to 40K. Because it'd be like. Because uh, it's illegal. Yeah. Mm. You'd have to go through underground avenues. black market shit, yeah. right? You have to talk to criminals to buy it. The dark web. Who's gonna, sp- who's gonna spend. Still crowed. Yeah, who's gonna spend 40K on a fucking. Tech Nine to go through all those avenues and risk getting fucking thrown in jail for it, yeah. yeah. But in the states, it's like, yeah, just go into Kmart, you'll find it at any gun shop. Five day waiting period. Just show me your license. The point is the availability and the access to that sort of shit. You know? Yeah, totally. That's what yeah, they're trying to rein back. It yeah. makes no fucking sense, yeah. and that's why Americans are trigger happy. They don't actually see the bigger picture. It's a cultural thing. You know what I mean? 
And he made the best point about how when we scaled back the gun laws, it's like, right, no more guns. Yeah, all right, that's fair enough. <laughs> it's like, yeah, because we all just said, yeah, yeah you're right. <laughs> there was no, like, no social media for everyone to fucking cry on hmm. shit, you know what I mean? Like, at that time, they just could just take it. Hmm. It was easy for them. Yeah, man. It's going to be hard in America. Not it's taking so my rights culture. away. Exactly, man. There's something ingrained in their culture. Yeah. So. That's the problem, man. And it, but when you have dickheads like Trump come out and say, oh, it's a mental health issue, it's not a gun control issue. No, you fuckhead, it's a gun control issue. Why have these mentally unstable people got access to shit like M15s or mm. MP5s or anything that's like semi-automatic mm. and high-powered? Yeah. Why? For what fucking reason? Were there no checks done? Oh, like, why, man? So you could go to the States now, get residency and go and buy a gun. Easily. You'd have no issue. And it's the point of... Weapons being that readily available, where it's like anyone can fucking have one, it's there. Mm. It's a, there's no, nothing in place to stop it. You know what I mean? If you want a gun, you get a gun. But dude, if you wanted a gun right now, who would you go to to buy a gun? As in a semi-automatic shit? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, exactly. You don't know because you're normal. Mm. You don't fucking know. If you desperately needed a clean uh, fucking handgun with no serial numbers because you're going to kill someone. So you needed a Beretta. Who the fuck would you go to? Start hanging out at, like, you know, pubs looking for bikers. Nine millimeter double you know, chamber. Pulling over a bandito on the road. Hey, mate, you got a gun on you? M- I can probably a sawn off. Yeah. Like, shotgun. Actually, actually, no serial numbers on it. If my life depended on it, I could probably sort of find one. Yeah, so could we. If your life depended on it. But when would your life depend on it? You know what when, I mean? When you're that far gone, you just want to kill everyone? That's, that's Yeah. No, imagine... <laughs> Jerry's got that look at Imagine if you're that far gone, right? Yeah. It'd be a bit of a fucking... It, like, you'd have to think about it. Like, it'd be a process. If you had to get a gun right now... But you'd do it. You'd just do it. You'd do it, but it would be a process, and you wouldn't have a time frame on it. It'd be like, fuck, all right, I gotta go to this pub and start looking for these unsavory types. Gotta go talk to Big Tony. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. At the back. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? Yeah. And you'd have to go through a process, mm. and... Full well knowing that you could probably get rubbed out along the way anyway. Like, you know what I mean? Like, buying a a gun in the black market isn't an easy thing. And you're also dealing with unsavory individuals that are probably going to want a favour at some point as well, right? Imagine if you could just go into this, if you could just walk into a fucking Kmart and buy an MP5. Like, yeah, done. Yeah, it makes makes the job a little easier, that's for sure. A bit easier. Dude, do you know what you need to do to get a gun licence here? You need to go to the cop shop, you need to get a form, right? You need that form filled out. You need testimony from, like, a doctor and a solicitor, like someone who's going to vouch for your mental health and, like, just your character, yeah? Then you've got to go sit the test. You've got to make an appointment to sit the fucking test. Then you get cleared. Then you've got to prove that you're part of a shooting association or a gun club mm. in order to register any weapons, yeah? That makes sense, though. That's just that yeah. good. Then, <laughs> then, you've got, when you buy a fucking firearm, you need to register it, you need to prove that you have a safe place to store it, gun safe, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, do you know what I mean? There's months of litigation in between. Not four or five days. Not just five days of waiting period, you know, cooling off period. Can you sell me a gun? Yeah, you look all right. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. Give me a driver's license and uh, come back in five days. I don't have a driver's license, but I've got a key pass. <laughs> <laughs> do you understand what I'm saying? Mm. That's my point. Mm. And But that, when, like I said, and I'm repeating myself again, when you have dickheads like Trump saying, you know, undermining the whole fucking thing, it's like, it's not a gun control issue, it's a mental health issue. Okay, and what are you doing for mental health? You're stripping away every benefit. Healthcare's gone. Yeah, healthcare's gone in the States, man. Like, There's no mental health. It's finished. But that's my point. Trump, you want, Trump care. Do you want the powers that be? It's, yeah, kick to the teeth. sort of shit. <laughs> Trump care. I've got to lose to then and go dentist. Now nah, we'll just kick your teeth in. <laughs> it's fucked up, man. Uh, it's, it's sad, mm. but it's just how it is, man. Yeah, Bobby. Just... <laughs> <laughs> Blame Bobby. It's <laughs> such a crazy. Bobby's the weapon boy. Such Pretty a crazy much. thing, man. It's fucked up. But that's what gets me about conspiracy people. Yeah. Like I'm all, like you said, I'm all about. I love to have a look at them and stuff like that. But you got to think sometimes. You're not a believer. Well, no, not not always. Because fuck, man. <laughs> You know what kills me? Because you get in these conspiracy fucking comas, man. Oh, bad. That's what I'm saying. So you look at it differently, like. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you got to step outside the box and just say, you cunts are all fucked. I, I just need to go to work and pay my bills right now. Mm. I don't give a fuck about your conspiracy. That's the thing, man. Do you think fucking kids in Ethiopia give a shit about your conspiracy theory? Kids trying to look for water. Warlords in Colombia? They don't give a fuck. I don't care. If I went to m- my mum's village in Greece and started talking to them about, you know, the conspiracy in Sandy Hook, they'll look at me like, what are you fucking on about? Like, what are you oh, talking what, about? What are you talking about? Huh? 
I haven't got time for this. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got time for this. <laughs> That's what I would say. No quarter. <laughs> no quarter, eh? <laughs> you know what I mean? Think about it. For me, it's just like, just how shit works in this world doesn't make sense to me. Like, how everything's just money and, like... Like, we always talk about it. Like, the way we work, like, slaves, like... Okay, so what's your solution? Push to our limits, like... What's your solution? What's my solution? Yeah. I mean, right now, you're collating information that you see on YouTube, right? So, what, what's, what's it all going to come to? What's Where's it, where's it fall on its head? I'm being honest. <laughs> See, because, like, right now, yeah, like, this podcast wasn't meant to start as a conspiracy theory thing, right? And we talk about conspiracy theories a lot, and we talk about social awareness and that sort of shit, because we're just those type of people. Like, you and I have been talking about conspiracies and shit since, you know, forever. Mm-hmm. And Nick and I have been talking about bitching, you know, about our jobs since we were kids. Like, that, that's never going to change. So this podcast wasn't about raising awareness on conspiracy theories. It's just funny that we, along the way, we somehow raise awareness on just social issues that some people may not be aware of or don't spend any time thinking about. Yeah. Do you know, like, do you know what I mean? It's like, dude, we talk about, like, that Wilkinson and her yeah, my her salary troubles. thing. Mm. Why is that plastered on newspapers and in the news? Why? Because it's... There's got to be... Why? It sells newspapers. Because no one gives a fuck. And the, that's the sad part, that all these conspiracy theorists would keep building... Like, somebody them. at that at that fucking news station has to make... Has to say, okay, this is getting to be aired. Yeah. Like, someone has to make that decision. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, dude, why are we getting fed this shit when there's, like, a lot more important shit going on? Because... That's why I believe in depre- conspiracy. Okay. That's why I believe in conspiracy. I'll because tell you why. why. Because it's depressing to read about kids in Ethiopia. It's depressing to read about, you know, oppression of women mm. in Afghanistan. It's it's a pre- It's depressing. No, no one wants to buy a newspaper telling them that, you know, the world's going to shit and you're not doing anything about it. That, that's, that's why. I'm, I'm, I'm being dead. So instead we'll just fucking da- dazzle you with our fucking yeah, comedians. Yeah, because fucking- people want something to read on the train that's easy to, li- to, to get through. Let me ask you a question. Um, there's a fucking game, right? Hang on, let me see. There's this game that came out in... I so I read about it yesterday. All right, it came out in duh, 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 release date two thousand sixteen. No, oh yeah, yeah two, uh, November two thousand fourteen, and then two thousand sixteen or something. Right. I was going to ask you guys this, and this is exactly this is probably the perfect time to ask you this question. Right, it's a it's a war survival video game. Yeah, it's called This War of Mine, and it's a it's a let me describe to you what it is. Right, this war this is out of Wikipedia. It's a war survival video game developed and published by 11-Bit Studios. The game, inspired by the 92 to 95 siege of Sarajevo during the Bosnian War, differs from most war-themed video games by focusing on the civilian experience of war rather than the frontline combat. Characters have to make many difficult decisions in order to survive everyday dangers, right? And I, I messaged Johnny Dez because I saw like a trailer of it on the net. And I'm like, Jesus, this is incredible. It came up on What Culture, you know, the um, that YouTube page I talk about, whatculture.com. And it was under a thing called, like, 10 games that we have not been able to finish. And they give, like, they, they show all these games, right? Like, Batman Arkham Asylum's there, I think. And, like, all these random games. And, like, some of the reasons why they haven't been able to finish certain games is because the Easter eggs are just sheer, like, too many. You know, like, there's 500 plus Easter eggs in Arkham Asylum. It's going to take too fucking long to get through them in order to get the real ending, right? So, at some point, they're like, ah, I can't be fucked doing it. Yeah, you know, think of reasons why you, you stop playing video games. Oh, there's a level that's just ridiculously hard you're never going to get through. The story's too long. Whatever. This game came up, right? And the reason why they haven't been able to finish it is because it's just sheer depressing. And I messaged Johnny Dares and I said, hey, man, um, have you seen this game here? Right? And he messaged back and he said, uh, hang on, where is it? Uh, wait a second. I literally texted him about it. Like yesterday, and I sent him the link to the game. I said, "Have you played this?" He goes, "Yeah, for five minutes." I go, "Why?" And he hasn't responded yet. Right? I read more reviews on it, so I'm really curious. I really want to get it. The best way I can describe it is like it's like Prince of Persia, right? So it's like from the side, and oh, it's, original Prince of Persia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. From the side view, so like a platform game, and it's like it's like a war version of The Sims. Sims versus Prince of Persia. The whole point is, you start off with two guys in your crew, two, three guys in your crew, right? Two are sick, dying, and one guy's like an ex-TV like sport TV host mm. or a sport guy, 
and it's the middle of the war, right? So, like, the war's gone, come and gone, swept through your town. Everything is dark. Everything's, de- like, the, the side of the building, because it's, like, from a side view, like a platformer, the building looks destroyed, and, like, there's just people dying, things are being sieged, f- like, everything's just rubble. Like, it's a war scene in Sarajevo. And your your whole point of your game is a survival mode, man. So you're farming. Basically, during the day, you're patching up your building, your your um... You're building furniture, beds, planting crops, like trying to survive. And by night, you're like going out into town and you set your, your, your mm. targets to go into certain areas to loot. Scurrying out like a rat. Yeah, scavenging like rat. shit. Yeah, scavenging for shit, looking for rat medical boy. supplies. Rat boy. And you're stuck. You're left with decisions to make. Like, do I leave someone behind with a gun to protect like the base in case we get assaulted or mm. raided? Do I send someone else out who's like highly skilled with, like, weapons or something to go look for shit. You know what I mean? Mm. Do I take a weapon with me? Do I, or do I leave it here with a kid? you got kids in there, man. you got kids walking around. You're faced with dilemmas like you'll go into a building at night, like you go into some other town, and you'll be confronted by an old man. Like, you, you go in thinking you can clear this place out. Kill you him. Lo- Kill him. You take the weather in account. You set up a re- radio. You build a radio transmitter. To, and these are the things, because I read multiple accounts of the game yeah like people that have reviewed it played it and reviewed it and they also the same thing you go up to like you get confronted by an old guy right you go into a building thinking it's empty you pick a time of the day when you think it's going to be empty you go in right thinking i can fucking forage like and just scrounge everything i can without having to run in anyone and get the fuck out of here you'll be confronted by an old man telling you to get the fuck out because he's got a dying wife like his wife is dying and they're starving. Break his hips, till he shit and leave. Dude, it's like, and you're left with the decision. Do you shoot the guy? <laughs> go in and steal everything? Just, just a little quick spray. <laughs> yeah. Do you go in and shoot him? Him and his wife. Or do you leave and go home with nothing, with no supplies? I'm getting my motherfucking supplies. Yeah. <laughs> people will come to your door. Okay, old man, sorry. People, people will come to your door. Kids could be begging. You know? Kill them, kill them. And they'll come to your door saying, can you let us in? Break their neck. <laughs> like, let us in. Yeah. Like, we're starving, our parents have been killed, we need food and shelter. Rule number one of the fort, door opens to no one. Dude, literally, and it's that's, like, that's, fort, my, dude, that's my rules. Yeah. Literally, do you take the kids in? Especially if it's trauma. Because if you take them in, they're now a mouth to feed. And if they're sick, you've got to attend to their shit. I'd take them in and turn them into child soldiers. So everyone, <laughs> but that's the thing, you can. You can do that. As in, you give a kid a gun, but if he's not capable, if he's sick and dying, you got to get him better first. So you need yeah. to go and forage for fucking supplies. One of the reviewers was like, I played the first round, first playthrough, I got like five hours in and then everyone died because I just, I got too ambitious. I was going out trying to do shit and I, I didn't realize. Come back to the half four and kids yeah. are dead. Another time, <laughs> another time. Just shit on the ground. People he dead. sent one of his fittest, strongest dudes out to go look for supplies and he loaded him up with. Captain Bobby. He, he loaded him up with all the, the most expensive supplies, like all the shit that like they couldn't. Afford to lose, Captain Dick Libs. While he stayed back, while he stayed back to protect the fort, yeah, yeah like yeah. to protect the house. Yeah. Captain Bobby made Dude, up with this shit. When he did that, the guy got killed out, like while he was out. The he guy, was eating his Snickers. <laughs> the guy got killed while he was out. Yeah. Lost all the supplies, yeah. and he got raided anyway, and lost everything else, and he was one less member out. And he goes. Then this one of the reviewers literally said the first time around he got like five hours in, and he died. Rebooted it, he got like four days in. And he couldn't play it anymore because it was ultimately just depressing. Because that would fuck with your mind, yeah. man. And the game was made by people that actually survived war-torn things, like gone through Sarajevo. So it was from another aspect, man. And the humanity of this fucking game is just too much for most people to finish because they can't do it. Because you just get depressed because you build like human empathy and human nature <laughs> takes over. It's Sounds like you wanna, fun. You want to help everyone. You want to help everyone. But then you're forced to make decisions What's like that. What's the game called again? This war, uh, this war of mine. Oh, wow, man. I want to I want to get it purely just to see what wow. it's like. Out. But it's mentally fucking. It's toxic, man. It's just, and that's the thing. They're not saying there's nothing supernatural about it. There are no fucking zombies. We're okay to shoot blast zombies in the face twenty four seven. We're okay to play online shooters where you know you're playing PvP person versus person and you're just shooting cunts in the face twenty four seven. Lock and load, keep going back out there, drill everyone inside. But this game, man, takes you on this fucking journey where it's so real and you're forced to make moral decisions like that. And he goes, man, you might get the supplies from the old man, but morally, you're going to be bankrupt. Like, you're going to be bankrupt. And you just, if the game, if your stats in the game don't drop, physically and mentally, you won't be able to keep playing this game. So many reviewers just kept saying, like, one one thing was like, I remember someone had, had, had um, narrowed it down to like, 
do we need a game like this out there? Do we want to buy a game like this? No. Should we be playing a game like this? Yes. Every fucking person on the planet should be playing a game like this. Because it makes you think differently. Because, it, yeah, it puts you in the perspective of someone else. Mm. It's kind of a sounds, fucking... Sounds kind of weird to me. What do you mean? Like they're trying just to... Survival sell mode, man. Yeah, but I mean... And it puts you in the... It, it doesn't it's a game, you, so you just become a selfless pig and you just kill the old man. Yeah, but... Like, you, you don't s- actually take it as, like, That's because you life. have no empathy. When I play games, I don't have empathy for the game. But that's my point. I just kill the old man. I get my stats up. But in real life, would you kill that old man? No, I wouldn't. But it's not real life. Well, then you'd get killed. But it's... No, what I'm saying is... <laughs> because, look, there, 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 there are games... There are games that you switch off and crazy. disconnect to, right? And it's just an aimless shooter. You know, like mm. GTA, where your whole point is to just run people over... Yeah, and just shoot two hookers. Kill. Yeah, do whatever you got to do, yeah? yeah? But I played a survival mode, like a walkthrough survival mode called um, Fire... But that's the thing with games. You want to, like, just do, like, not real-life shit. But that's my point, that, like, this game... Sort of th- there are a lot of games that are now walk-through yeah. sort of story games, man, and, like, survival games and shit like that. There was that game, Fire Something. I can't remember the name of it. Fire Something. Firehouse or Fire wa- Firewatch. And See, I... Set, I yeah. You know, and that's set in the ju- in the forest up north in the, in the States... And it's all set over, like, a, two different summers of, like, um, wildfires. Mm. And, dude, the whole game, you're just walking around, picking clues up and, like, doing shit like that. It's like a story. It's like a movie. It plays out like a movie. Cigarette butt. Mm. Yeah, yeah, there is. You find literally a pack of cigarettes. Put that in my inventory. For I'm serious. I'm not even joking. And, man, it was a fun game to play. It was done by an independent company, mm. like an indie company, like startup. Great game to play. Great story, cinematic. Keeps you riveted. When all, Dude, I've played games where you're literally hang gliding from the sky while firing Uzis into a, a plane and... <laughs> I get what you're saying, but I just don't think a game could make me go, oh my god, I just need to save that old man. And this is so, I just don't think it would do that to me, dude. I just don't think it would maybe make me like... Maybe you should like, give it a go. I'd maybe be sitting there crying over the old man. Like, maybe you would be crying. But no, I'm just saying. Give it a go. But it's, it's okay. It, it, that's what I'm saying. Give it, like, it's, it's shit like that. You know, where it's like morally... It, it's, it's a video game. Yeah, sure it is. But it's... It story. plays with your conscience. Yeah, it plays with your fucking conscience because you're going to make these decisions. And because whether we like it or not, we invest in shit. Dude, it's like... You know when a spider fucking takes up residence in your bathroom mm. and you're watching it for like five months and eventually like it either disappears or, you know, your cat kills it and like people fucking cry over like the dead spider because mm. it was like their pet all of a sudden or their companion? Mm. Not me. Fuck those spiders. Yeah, you don't. I'm just saying. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like the fucking, it's like, you know, if you had a possum that was always in your house and you're used I, to I it. I do. <laughs> yeah. For two years, it's mm. constantly there, like, you know, eating your fruit and scratching at the roof you know, while you're off. trying to sleep. Yeah, but then if you found it dead, I'd be celebrating, <laughs> dude. I I'd, break, told, its I ne- I'd actually, break its neck. I'd break its neck. I actually told Ren, I go, let me deal with it. <laughs> no, no, but I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, I know what you're saying. I just don't yeah. think a game could make me just fall into this like. But you should give it a go. You don't know. Yeah, just I don't. Know. I reckon he doesn't want to play because he knows it'll, no, no, it'll, like, it'll, it'll pull out his heart. Yeah, it wouldn't. <laughs> like, dude, I'm a very empathetic person, and if I was in that situation, I'd want to help people. But playing a game, it just doesn't. I would, nah. I don't know. Unless it was like a simulation, fucking 3D, fucking, and you like really feel like you're there, maybe. But but that's the thing, man. Whatever this, the platform, you still allow yourself to fall into the pit. It's like a movie. Mm. You know oh, it's a I'm movie. Full, you no, know it's a movie. No, but I'm not buying it. Sorry. Okay. I'm not do you f- okay. Do you feel any empathy when you watch a movie that's based on real st- real time events? Yeah, movies I do. Why? Yeah. Actually, I wanted to bring this up in the podcast for some time. I always get like now that I've got a daughter, like whenever there's like these heartwarming moments between like a dad and a daughter, or like he's proud of her or something, it always brings tears to my eyes, dude. I can't okay, help it. But this movie is literally about. Uh, this game, this game is literally simulating... <laughs> Don't look at me like that, Charlman. This game is literally uh, simulating civil war in, like, Eastern Bloc countries. From 92 to 95, never like, ever war. A kid, when you're dealing with two kids coming to the door, asking for help, and you've got to fucking either turn them away or shoot them. Dude, in real life I'd help them, but in a game I'd just turn them away if it makes me survive. But, you but, fought, but in a movie... But you, with actors, with actors, like, patting each other on the ass, you clutches... But the guys like, that made this game... We're actually in the war. Yeah. Like, this is real life scenarios that they went through. And it wouldn't... Troll, you're not going to sit there crying playing it. Don't tell me you are. Dude, then someone to sit there crying, but you'd feel like, oh shit, what am I going to do? Yeah. I'm going to kill the old man. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck that old cunny. That's please. what I'm saying. I just don't think it would give me that point, dude. I just feel like it's like they're trying to just to ramp it up a bit. It's not ramp it up. This game got released like a year and a half ago, man. Oh, whatever. Like, whatever they... Yeah. I'm telling, you, I'm telling you what reviewers' accounts and like people have said it after like a year of this game being out, mm. physically saying they can't play it, yeah. just because it's an it's a story, like a video game on these sort of terms is a story that you get sucked into, like a movie, like blah 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 blah. Okay, 
Dude, it's like, okay. I just don't think, it, I, honestly, I'm just, yeah, it might for some people, me probably not, but, yeah. I'll, I'll buy this game and give it to you and force you to play, like, the first five. Dude, I, no, you know dude, what we're going to do? We're going to buy it and we're going to come over. Yeah, we'll play it. And we'll play it. I cannot see myself sitting there going, oh my we're God. We're going to get Mario's kids. pizza. <laughs> oh my we're going to play it. I just can't see myself doing it, dude. Done. Like, I want to see how much it is Getting online. upset about these <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm kids. I don't know why, why, why the fuck did I get to this? Uh, you got onto this because we're I'll, talking about how... In possession four, yeah? Yeah. The um, media and stuff trying to make us happy. Yeah, about empathy and sh- yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like no one wants to. So that's the thing. You couldn't sell this fucking video game. On, have you ever heard about it? No. And you're a gamer. I mean, you know what titles are coming out? The board game. Yeah, yeah. There's actually a board game about it. But that's what I'm saying. Like no one, you couldn't sell this at Big W as a Christmas fucking release. It came out in November 2015. You couldn't sell it as a Christmas release. Like, hey, play the, this war of mine, where it's a simulation survival game based on the Cold War and the Siege of Sarajevo. No one gives a fuck, because it fires a little too close to home for some people as well. But they're happy to push GTA Five, where the whole point of it is to fucking mow people down and steal cars. Like, does that make sense? It's fucked, dude. Like, it's warped. No one gives a fuck about half the shit that's in the media. I don't. You try to get real news, and I'm stuck watching the ABC channel because it's actually news, even though it's 40, 40 minutes of, like, you know, Tony Abbott's press conference. Like, who gives a fuck? But at least it's not Wilkinson or fucking Sonia Kruger talking shit about, you know, holiday makeovers or how to lose weight in spite of the season. Get fucked. EB Games has it done. How much? Uh, it says here... We need to have a... Um, it's actually creepy. It's called This War of Mine, The Little Ones. Yeah, yeah, that's a that's a uh, like a patch up with like, like a like a DLC. Yeah, where it adds you you automatically start with like two kids in your crew as well. Uh, buying you now forty nine ninety five. Pick it up for thirty bucks used <laughs> with the <Yeah>. trade in. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's not going to get me all down and depressed. Sorry, guys. But... Well, I've got a trailer here, so I'm just saying up, about like what's morally bankrupt and what isn't, and why we don't get fucking the news of what's going on mm. on the other side of the world.